we are now in the generation of the next gen consoles. We've got the Xbox Series X, the Xbox Series S, the PlayStation 5, the Nintendo OLED. Anyway, usually with these new consoles, there's new features, you know, like more power, better games, better graphics, all these really amazing and supposedly better things. And with the evolution of the consoles comes the evolution of the controller. Sometimes. When the Xbox One first came out in 2013, it shipped with this controller. This is the first controller that came out with the Xbox One. I believe when I got my first Xbox One, I got the Titanfall bundle. It was somewhere in 2013. And it shipped with this controller here. The controller actually felt really good. I never had a problem with this controller. But what's amazing is just how little this controller has evolved. It didn't really occur to me until just recently that this controller has had the same form factor, same shape, same function for going on eight years now. This first controller lasted for about two years. Then eventually they upgraded it by adding a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack right near the expansion port. But for the most part, the controller remained exactly the same. Now eventually they came out with the Elite controller which was based off of the first controller. I remember when this first came out, I wasn't too keen on spending a lot of money for a controller. I seemed perfectly happy with the controller that came with the system. It was sort of a, if it's not broken, don't fix it, or if it's not broken, don't pay $150 to fix it. I couldn't justify spending that much money on an elite controller, but until I did. And when I first received this, I gotta tell you, the first thing I thought was, Boy, this thing has got some weight to it. It kind of reminds me of that scene from Jurassic Park. Hey, where did you find this? It locks under my seat. Are they heavy? Yeah. Then they're expensive, put them back. Yeah, like that. The weight of it did make it feel like it was a premium device. Not to mention, it was also very cool to be able to remove the thumbsticks and add taller thumbsticks or a convex or a concave top and the removable D-pad, which you could go for the dish, which I prefer to use, or the classic plus sign four-way D-pad. Either way, you could interchange them and use whatever fits your gaming playstyle. A few other features that were introduced with this first Elite controller, there were the detachable paddles that went under the bottom and the two-way trigger locks. Now, I choose not to use these features for multiple reasons. For one, the detachable paddles can be assigned to do different actions depending on which game you were playing. I found myself accidentally hitting the paddles and performing the actions when I didn't really want to perform them, so I had to remove them. Also, the trigger locks caused a problem for me when I played a game that relied on how far you pulled the trigger in. So if you had it locked to where it felt like a hair trigger, that means you weren't pulling the trigger all the way in so the game wouldn't perform the way that it was supposed to perform. So I had to turn those off. So all in all, I paid extra money for basically a heavier controller. I found the additional rubber grips to be actually really nice, but after some time, the grips started to peel off. I ended up having to replace the controller. And for $150 US, that shouldn't be happening at all. Now, when the Xbox One S came out, there were some visual changes that they made on the controller. As you can see here, they made a little bit of an indention at the top where the Xbox power button is. Now, personally, style-wise, I actually really like this, but they also added Bluetooth capability and you could actually connect this to your PC or mobile device, which also is very, very cool. Now, while there is some additional functionality and some cosmetic changes, essentially, it is the same controller. And by this time, it's 2016, three years later after the Xbox One has come out. Now, essentially, we're still on the same platform, the Xbox One to the Xbox One S and the Xbox One X. Even though the Xbox One S was more powerful than the One and the One X being more powerful than the One S, they still all use the same controller because they're basically on the same platform. Now, eventually, they came out with a new Series 2 Elite controller. Now, there are several differences from the second controller to the first controller. One of them being they actually have the rubber grip on the top and the bottom of the handles, which 
I think is a lot better. Also, they gave us three settings for a trigger lock instead of just two, and the battery is internal instead of removable like the first one. One of the things they added a while back was being able to upgrade your controller's firmware through your Xbox console. And the thing about the Series 2 is it comes with a lot more features than the Series 1. You'll also notice that they went to a USB-C connector, which in my opinion is definitely more forward thinking. Now, one thing I didn't mention about the first Elite Series was the case. It came with the case, which was kind of cool, I guess you could say. You could use it to store your controller, keep the charging cable in here, or your detachable paddles, or your thumbsticks, or even your other D-pad. Now, the difference between this case and the case for the Series 2 Elite controller was that they actually allowed you to be able to charge the controller while it's inside the case. They offer this port that lets you plug in the USB-C cable so it could be charged while it's stored. It comes with pretty much all the same things that the first Elite controller came with, except it has this key for some further adjustments of the controller. Now, eventually the Series X and the Series S came out and we got a new controller. Now, while this controller is slightly smaller, it's still pretty much the exact same shape. One of the things you'll notice cosmetically is they got rid of that little indention at the top and you can see the D-pad was changed to the concave shape that kind of matches the Elite Series controller. I find the texture grip to be much more prominent than the last controller as well, and of course, USB-C connector. But here's the thing, when you look at all of these controllers, they are essentially the same controller. This controller has not really changed that much since 2013. We are now on the next-gen systems, Xbox Series X, and Series S. And we went through three other consoles before we got to these systems. And Xbox seems to think that this is the perfect controller. And who am I to argue? It's a great controller. Is it my favorite controller of all time? No, but I do like it and I feel very comfortable with it. Now, all that being said, I'm not sure if I would suggest that you spend the money on buying a Series Elite 2. If you wanna know what my opinion is, I think you should go to Xbox Design Lab. Microsoft brought out the Xbox Design Lab around the time of the release of the Xbox One S. I made my own Yokomi themed ones with black and yellow. I even made mostly yellow ones and then had Yokomi engraved in it. Now they say it's an engraving, but I think it's really just print. But all that to say that if I was to do it all over again, I'm not sure if I would spend the money on the Elite. Going back over all these controllers that have come out over all these years, I've had every controller from the Duke from the first Xbox to the current Xbox controllers that we get with the Xbox Series X and the Series S. And personally, I've decided that if I'm gonna spend extra money on a controller, I'm gonna get it made to look like I want it to look. I'm gonna go to Design Lab and I'm gonna put together the colors that I want, the controllers that I want. They give you quite a few options. The only thing is I wish they had more options with the buttons, like maybe we could have colors for the letters, like the X, Y, and the A, B, things like that. But for the most part, if you have the option to create your own controller and have your name put on it, personally, I think that's better than spending the extra money to get the Elite. It's not to say that the Elite isn't worth it. The Elite controller is a great device to have. I think it's one of those things that you should test drive before you decide to spend the money on it because I think you might have more fun coming up with your own custom controllers on Xbox Design Lab. Now, all this came about because I noticed just how little the controller had changed in eight years. When you look at all the other consoles, Nintendo, PlayStation, their controllers have definitely changed over the years. Xbox controllers, for the most part, have stayed pretty much exactly the same. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned is third-party controllers, like, for example, Scuff. I know a lot of people use those controllers. I actually have fellow content creator friends that are sponsored by Scuff. So if anybody watches this video and uses Scuff controllers or any other third-party controllers for their Xbox, I would really like to know what you think about them compared to the Xbox controller that comes with the system. I would love it if you left a comment just to tell me your experience about the Xbox controllers. Maybe the first Elite controller, did you also have a problem with the rubber grips coming off? Or do you use the Elite 2 controller? Or do you just use the regular controller that comes with the system? And has anybody else made controllers in the Xbox Design Lab? Let me know, I like to engage in the comments, so it'd be nice to hear from you. Now, I have a variety channel on Twitch where I go live every week. It's a mixture of gaming, music, web shows, all kinds of fun stuff. Also, I have Instagram and Twitter, or you could visit my website at yogomi.com. I appreciate you checking out the video, and I will be back soon with another. See you guys.